In Elden Ring, Arcane is known as... And according to the family tree I made, Arcane is Dexterity's evil cousin. Anyway, in this video, I'll be taking five major areas of Elden Ring and finding the most powerful Arcane scaled weapons for each area. But unlike other stats, Arcane scales with status effects such as poison or bleed, so any weapon with passive amounts of these status effects I can use. Just like the other videos, I have to go through each area and find the best Arcane weapons to kill the boss of that area and then move on. But enough explaining, let's get going. I started with the Bandit class because it has the highest Arcane stat and it's my favorite class in the game. Then I died to Mr. Krabs and got my horse. I would also like to mention that my computer is super weird. After that, I walked around a little bit and tested out my knife. Then I started actually going down south and killed Bok for his good luck charm. A bit further outside the Patches Cave, me and Yura fought Bloody Finger and Ajurius, and he casually drops the best dagger in the game. This dagger is called the Redubia, and to show you how good it is, I paired it with a great knife to down Patches in about 3 seconds. After bargaining with Patches, I picked up my flask from the Church of America and proceeded to Fort Height. From here, not only did I get half of the medallion, but the best blood ash of war, bloody slash. But first, I rode a lift up into Castle Morn to get a talisman and challenge a boss. The talisman was actually the twin blade talisman, which increases the final hit in an attack chain by 45%. I felt it would be useful for fast attacking weapons and slow moving bosses, like this guy. Usually the best thing to do for this fight is grab a giant strength weapon and pound him, but instead of that I utilized cut crease and straight bleed damage. It took about 5 attempts to beat this guy, which granted me 3600 runes. Totally worth it. After that, I went around challenging random mini bosses for runes and smithing stones. But after upgrading all my stuff, me and Roger were ready to take out the hairy lizard. Fuck! Well, I guess we're playing solos. Remember how I said Bloody Slash is the best blood ash of war? Although it does take a tenth of your health. Usually, Margaret's fight doesn't get hard until the second phase, but this time, he didn't use any of his combo moves. And the only bleed proc I got was right at the end. Good finisher, I guess. Entering Stormvale, I chose the side path because of the hook claws and the battle with the knight. Apart from that, there isn't really anything else to do, so it's on to Godric. Although, there's not much to say. Godric is easier than Margaret and gives you a free bleed proc in his second phase. But throughout my fight, I used Bloody Slash. And as I said, in the second phase, it's a free bleed proc. And to be honest, that's all it took. Godric down. I'm the lord of all that is. In this stage, for my main weapons, I literally only use daggers, like the Roduvia and the Great Knife. And it's not like I couldn't have had side weapons. All I had to do was make a small sacrifice. For my armor and talismans, I just used the full bandit set, the twin blade talisman, and I forgot to mention I got the green turtle talisman. Now that I've conquered Limgrave, I can access all the good stuff in Liurnia. First, I went and got the Volcano Manor invitation, very important, but the next part of my plan involved killing hundreds of homeless people. The weapon I was trying to get was this Moon Halberd by farming over 500 Albanurix in this same spot. It took over three hours while watching Avengers Endgame, and finally. The work is done. I won. Well, not yet. By themselves, these weapons are actually pretty weak, but upgraded as far as I can, combined with the right talismans, and blessed with a blood flame blade, they are inevitable. I also killed Loretta for her stack of runes. So, note from the future, it turns out these weapons are actually pretty bad, according to some Fextra Life reviews. And when I mean bad, I mean their bleed buildup isn't that good, but their poison and sleep buildup are amazing. So, I'll definitely see this coming back later. I would like to apologize again for the continuous lapse of my judgement.
Bloodhound Spanx Gel Solos. In this stage, I farm for 3 hours for some useless toothpicks, but for my main weapon, I use the Bloodhound Fang, and for my side weapons, I use the toothpicks. For my armor and talismans, I use the full bandit set because Lyrnia has no armor whatsoever, the claw talisman, and the green dog talisman. Now that I've conquered Limgrave and Lyrnia, I can now move on to Kaelid as the third area in terms of difficulty. To get some weapon upgrades, I first went into Gale Tunnel, defeated the Magma Worm, and found Alexander. After that, I found a tutorial to skip Gale Cave. All you had to do is climb up these red rocks in Limgrave, which resulted in me getting the Regalia of Eo Chad. A little further in Kaelid, I brought this weapon to kill the giant dragon, and two minutes later I realized, it doesn't have bleed. Now, I could have just looked at the weapon and seen that it had no bleed, but if you look at the weapon skill, it's all red. After a sad letdown, I did eventually switch to the Blood Ounce Fang to get my 100k runes. Right next to the dragon, I picked up the Radagon Source Seal, the best talisman in the game, and then visited the abandoned cave. This place was 99% rot, but it did feature the clean rot knights at the end. They dropped the Golden Scarab, and then I went and picked up the Serpent Bow on the other end. By now, I was itching for some farming, so I started killing the little guys by the Bestial Sanctum. Yes, I am a bully, but I need that armor. After about an hour, I can safely say the fashion is immaculate. The weapon they drop is called the Vulgar Militia Saw, and I was going to buff one with poison and put bleed grease on the other, but apparently this weapon doesn't like incantation buffs. Now that I'm all geared up, I felt it was time to fight General Radon, taking the short bus portal to his arena. First, I made sure to summon the whole gang so we could take him out as fast as possible. After waiting for everyone to gather in one spot, we all took him down together. Let's go. This stage was an entire cosplay. For my main weapons, I used two vulgar militia saws, and for my side weapons, I used the Bloodhound's Fang. For my armor and talismans, I used the full short bus set, the claw talisman, and the Radagon Sword Seal. Now that I've conquered the Mosquito Den, I can enter the Bee's Nest. But first... Anyway, in the next stage of difficulty, I have access to Volcano Manor, Altus Plateau, and the Royal Capital. So I instantly took Rai's hand into Volcano Manor. In here, I got the drawing room key, opened the door, and talked to the guy about doing some recusant challenges. After doing two, I came back to the snake lady, and she gave me the snake katana. I wasn't sure if I was going to use this, but it's a good poison weapon to have on hand. Another reason I knew is because the star of the show is just two flights upstairs. Up here, I fought Inquisitor Giza, who drops Giza's wheel, one of my favorite weapons in the game. To test how strong it was, I went to a sleeping God's Kid Noble. Then I upgraded it to plus 8 and challenged the Draconic Tree Sentinel. I can't understate how helpful this weapon skill is for killing small and slow moving bosses. It has the poise of a greatsword and the bleed of rivers of blood. Also, apparently it's out of Bloodborne. Entering the capital, I charged straight into the sewers to challenge Edgar, Priest of Blood. Fighting this small guy with a big clunky weapon, I died every time. And bleed against bleed is never good. So I switched to the Blood Ounce Fang for the wide AoE to kill the dogs, and that did the trick. The Blood Talisman is now mine. Another talisman I got to boost the power of the wheel was actually the Axe Talisman. This improves the weapon's charge attacks, which are already so good. To get my fourth talisman slot, I challenged Godfrey. Here's how that went. After that, I was just gonna go challenge Morgoth until I forgot the greatest item in Elden Ring. Not that. Not even this. Frog. And don't think this mask is just for show. It increases Arcane by 4. My buffing routine for this fight included throwing a poison pot at the wall that proc the poison boost talisman. Then I used Margaret Shackle to get him on his knees.
In this stage, I am Frog. For my main weapon, I use the Giza's Wheel, and for my side weapon, I use the Bloodhound's Fang. For my armor and talismans, I use the Albaneric Mask, the Kindred of Rot's Talisman, the Blood Talisman, the Axe Talisman, and the Ritual Sword Talisman. Now that Landell is completed, I can enter the Snowy Alps. To be honest, this is one of the most barren areas of the game, except for this dumbass. <laughs> Other than that, I got the smithing 3 bell bearing, the somber 3 bell bearing, and defeated Okina for the rivers of blood. Now, some of you may be saying that this is the best weapon in the game, but after tons of complaining and nerfs, this weapon is now dog shit. And Bloodhound's Fang with Blood Grease absolutely so lose. We also killed Neil and got the other half of the medallion, so now I could access the even colder ice biome. And in here, I took the Moog portal straight to Moog land. And guess what I did? I challenged Moog. And I died so many times. At one point, I even got the purified crystal tier that blocks his super move. In five attempts after that, I finally beat him. The reward from this guy is well worth it, 420,000 runes in the best spear in the game. I also got the fire scorpion charm because this weapon has bleed and fire damage. With a plus 10 weapon, I challenged fire giant. After that, I took Melanus Hand and Nefera Missoula. We're in the endgame now. Then I grabbed Somber Bell Bearing 4 and challenged Godskin Duo. For this fight, I used the power of Sleep Grace and Bernal. And it took a total of 10 hits to sleep the big guy while Bernal was distracting Slim Jim. When he came awake, me and Bernal absolutely destroyed him. And when they respawned, I used the Sleep Pot fast enough so that Bernal couldn't attack him and we had this little quiet moment. I mean, quiet until we juiced the hell out of him. After Godskin Duo, I beat Alexander and picked up his talisman. Then I challenged Malekith. Normally for any other weapon, this would have been insanely easy, but this weapon was just way too slow. So I switched to a well-known blood boiler, I hope, the Bandit Curved Swords. Combined with Seppuku, the Thorny Crack tier, and upgraded to plus 25, I rematched Malekith. This time went way better. It turns out spamming jump attacks is one of the fastest ways to attack in this game. I even got a bleed proc right at the end, and bleed can't kill as a final hit, so I switched to a crystal dart and killed him right away. Moving on to Godfrey, I knew this guy was going to be easy. Not only because he is easy, but because he gives you a free jump attack every few seconds. And with a giant strength weapon, those staggers and bleeds add up. Moving on to Horalu, I got some insane bleed procs that remind me how good this weapon skill is. I also got good RNG with his moves with a standstill ground clap, which allowed me to kill him super fast. Finally, Radagon and Elder Beast. It actually turns out Radagon is weak to fire damage. Actually, thinking back, I nearly went hitless until he decided to curb stomp me. During Elden Beast, I knew my blood or fire damage wouldn't do anything, so I focused on physical attacks, and I even managed to stagger him during the Golden Star attack. In the end, it was just a race to the finish, and I was in first place the whole time. Blood for the Blood God. Anyway, thanks for watching this video. Do the liking and subscribing. See you in Elden Ring DLC. Fracture.